Hey, what's going on guys? So Southampton are closing in on the signing of Gavin Bazunu for a fee reported to be around £10 million. Given his age, the fact that he's a full-time Republic of Ireland international and how highly he's rated at his parent club Manchester City, this isn't an excessive fee by any means. With Fraser Foster's departure to Tottenham, a goalkeeper to challenge Alex McCarthy for the starting berth was desperately required. While Hazen Hattel may very well opt for experience with someone who's tried and tested in McCarthy to begin with, it's only a matter of time before Bazunu makes that number one shirt his own based on what I've seen from him over the last two years. For those unaware of his career trajectory, he started his career at Ireland's biggest club in Shamrock Rovers. He was thrown into the deep end at only 16 years of age by manager Stefan Bradley, which is more or less unprecedented for a goalkeeper. Bradley even issued a statement claiming that he was hesitant to put so much pressure on someone so young, but given his talent and level-headedness, Bazunu was ready for first-team action. Impressed by how well he handled himself in the handful of appearances he had in the League of Ireland Premier Division, Manchester City saw off competition from Chelsea and Tottenham to sign him up for a reported 420,000 quid. This was a pre-contract as Bazunu wanted to complete his high school degree in the Irish education system. He continued to make a name for himself at Man City's all-conquering under-18 side and was even named in the first team's Champions League round of 16 second leg match against Real Madrid in 2020. Although he didn't make an appearance for City at the top level, Bazunu was given a four-year contract extension till 2024 before being loaned out to League One side Rochdale for the remainder of the season. Game time was shared between him and Jay Lynch, who was almost 10 years his senior. Unfortunately, Rochdale were relegated this season to League Two, but this gave Bazunu some much-needed experience of men's football in an environment where every facet of his game was tested and he had to make numerous saves week in, week out. His performances caught the eye of promotion chasing Portsmouth who brought him in for last season. While they were unable to sneak into the playoff spot like they'd hoped for, Bazunu received all the plaudits, winning both their Players' is Player and Player of the Season while making 46 appearances across all competitions. This will be a real sickener for Pompey supporters seeing the hero of their season head over to St. Mary's, although I suppose it's not the first time that's happening. In addition to his admirable performances at club level, he's made 10 appearances for the Republic of Ireland. What makes this such a big achievement is the fact that the goalkeeping position is currently the only one in which there are quality options available in the form of Liverpool's League Cup final saviour Kelleher and Bournemouth promotion winner Mark Travers. The rest of the side is rather shite, to put it politely, and arguably the worst Irish outfit in several decades, most certainly in my lifetime. Bazunu's name was doing the rounds on social media after a save versus Luxembourg with the score at 0-0. Ireland went on to win 3 0, and it's genuinely one of the best I've ever seen in the history of the sport. Unfucking believable. This undoubtedly played its part in him winning the RTE Young Sportsman of the Year for 2021. He also saved a penalty from none other than Cristiano Ronaldo in a World Cup qualifier, which led to further publicity, even though Ireland went on to lose the game in the 96th minute. Now, the worry about bringing this fella in is the fact that going to the Premier League from League One is a massive step up for anyone, let alone a player who is so inexperienced. However, time is obviously on his hands and if supporters remain patient, then the coaching staff will back themselves to develop him into a genuine world beater. This is precisely why Man City are looking to include a buyback clause into the deal as they firmly believe he has what it takes to take over from Edison in the future. If reports are to be believed, they wanted Bazunu to be number two for next season ahead of Zach Steffen and Scott Carson, but he refused for the sake of his own growth. Now, if his press conferences and interviews are anything to go by, He's first and foremost very well-spoken, extremely articulate, and on top of that, he doesn't lack in self-belief whatsoever. You couple that with talent and the sky is well and truly the limit. If you look at his style of play, Bazunu has all the hallmarks of a modern-day goalkeeper. He's comfortable on the ball, willing to get involved in build-up play, and extremely calm under pressure. You'll see shades of Neuer in the sense that he loves stepping out of his box, so much so that he's almost a fifth defender at times, playing on the shoulder of his centre-backs. Sections of Portsmouth fans even claim that he's responsible for dictating the tempo of their play when the sides sit deep against certain opposition, which is impressive and bizarre in equal measure. In addition to this, he's also a great shot stopper. The two are usually mutually exclusive, so it wouldn't be over the top to suggest that he's got little to no weaknesses in his game. By all accounts, he's a consummate professional off the pitch and goes the extra yard in training to ensure he makes the most of his playing career. Given how relaxed he's looked in pressure cooker situations, I think Sane supporters are in for a treat with this signing.
We can't underestimate just how important a goalkeeper is in the modern day game. You look at someone like Liverpool when they went from Loris Karius to Alisson, it has been night and day. The number of one-on-ones that Alisson saves is truly unbelievable and that is pretty much the entire reason that Liverpool can play such a high line. With this in mind, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Southampton playing some front foot attacking football. Obviously, consistency is the name of the game and that is something that the Saints have been lacking for a long, long time. You never know when they're going to be hit for like six or seven or end up winning one nil. Makes it exciting for neutrals but it's a real head scratcher for supporters. I fully expect this lad's name to be in the headlines throughout the course of next season and while there are no guarantees in football I am absolutely convinced that he's going to make it to the very very top. Cheers for tuning in guys feel free to ask me any questions you have and I hope you've had a great weekend.